In this part of video, we'll talk about how to write the ethical, safety, and environmental concerns. First, ethical. In fact, I have never encountered any ethical issue in physics. Probably uh, you may face more of these in maybe biology or if you even study psychology. So physics shouldn't be an issue. If you know any ethical concern you have, you can think of, then let me know in the comment section. Okay, safety. Here's a list of something that you can think about whether it is applicable to your research questions. So the first thing is protective wear. So it may be goggles, lab coat, or even um, the gloves as well. Uh, next thing is about the warning size. So if your experiment is kind of dangerous, then you may want to put some sort of warning sign so that uh, to prevent people uh, from going near your experiment area. The next thing is more directly, uh, what kind of potential danger you may think of uh, regarding your research question. So it might be uh, cracking glass maybe, All right, so maybe things can uh, potentially crack something. Uh, if you involve electricity, so you may be thinking about uh, whether it will be close to water source or not. Uh, if you're working with something that is really extremely cold or extremely hot, then uh, there should be some measure you should do to uh, prevent yourself getting hurt. If you're doing something to do with maybe mechanics uh, moving very quickly, uh, then surely that could be a potential danger as well. And so think about what you can do with it. Uh, and if you somehow maybe work with water, then you may make the floor or your table very slippery. So uh, something you should talk about. In a case where you involve any chemicals. I think in physics, uh, it shouldn't be something that is extremely special. Probably you just do maybe table salt solution, sugar solution, syrup, um, or like any, any chemicals actually. Uh, no matter what chemical you do, uh, you can always try to find a authoritative organization uh, to refer to the guideline of that particular chemical. So whether or not it's irritating to your skin, or whether or not it is flammable, etc., uh, you should be able to find that as you quote and cite uh, what they said from a certain organization. Of course, you should be able to judge whether it's authoritative or not, whether it's trustworthy or not. Uh, in a case where you may be using something like maybe um, laser, actually I should say uh, laser, if it's too bright, then again, there should be a certain label or a certain legal uh, qualification to see whether it is uh, suitable for you to use or maybe over a certain power rating uh, it will require a uh, license or require a certain measure to do so you should pay attention to that here actually I, I wanted to say uh, whether it's too loud so maybe it will be hurting your ears or so so maybe there should be an organization uh, telling you uh, at what uh, decibel of loudness uh, it will hurt your hearing ability or so. So all these things is not just you know mentioned by you but you should always find the certain organization which has an expert uh, giving out guideline onto this. Right? So this is something you should do to show you have the attitude to be safe in the experiment. Uh, if you really want to show a good performance in this area you should always try to be more Think of the concerns that are more specific to experiments. So that is to say, uh, for very general stuff like uh, wearing lab coat, it may not be much appreciated, right? Or it may not be directly uh, helpful. So in those those reasons, uh, probably I would not even bother to put that unless you got really got nothing to put down. And lastly, uh, this is something that people usually overlook as well. Do not over exaggerate the safety issue for example uh, i have seen in the past years some people when they work with in their methodology they may just using one or two or even three three d cell d cell is like one sort of d size battery and you know one of the d cell is actually 1.5 v right this is a standard uh, and then they try to say oh be careful not to touch the water with it or else you will get electrocuted all right with the battery and in fact a battery cannot kill you all right so uh, if you're saying uh, the battery can electrocute you then 
um, I don't think it's a good impression because from my perspective, uh, you it is showing a weakness that you don't understand uh, some basic physics behind. So really try to think whether uh, a certain thing that you mentioned is really dangerous or not, uh, then uh, then you should consider whether to include it in this section. Lastly, environment. So it should be quite straightforward. Something you have to think about is uh, whether or not you can actually reduce the waste from your design. So maybe instead of, uh, maybe you are using some sort of chemicals or water, can you actually reuse uh, those water from each trial instead of just getting new stuff uh, for each trial? That's one thing. Second thing is uh, how do you handle the waste? So even if you reuse it, at the end you still have to uh, handle like those chemicals or whatever uh, after the experiment, right? So how do you actually handle it after the experiment? Uh, if you try to dispose it, would it be actually safe to do that? So maybe, let's say you are doing oil, let's say. Uh, so if you're thinking to pour oil to the sink, would it be actually good for the environment or not? Or uh, simply good for the whole maybe school or laboratory structure or not? Uh, is there any way that you can reuse it in a more meaningful way? In a case where you find there's literally no concerns related to uh, environmental and even safety as well, uh, you could actually put down there's no concern, uh, but you should still put down some more justification for that. I would actually uh, say if you try hard, uh, there should be some concern you can talk about uh, throughout your whole research question. So it shouldn't be the case where you have literally no concern.